Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV. My name is Leslie Samuel. In this episode, episode 23, we're going to be talking about reflexes and how they work. We're going to talk about the, the knee jerk reflex and we're going to talk about the eye blink reflex. Uh, I have a very special guest here today. This is my wife, Marguerite. Hello. All right, so this is my wife and she's going to help me to illustrate these two reflexes and then we're going to talk about how it happens. Let's first look at the knee jerk reflex. Okay, so let's look at the knee jerk reflex. I'm sorry I don't have a, a tendon hammer here. I have a remote control, but the principle is still the same. And what I'm going to do, uh, here we have the patella bone, and right beneath that we have the patellar tendon. And what I'm going to do is try to hit her exactly on that patellar tendon, and we're going to see what happens. So here we go. Ooh, one more time. Okay, so I hit, and what happens is, you know this already, but her leg kicks forward. Um, there's a muscle contraction happening, and we're going to look at that process in a little while. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try not to kick. Can you do that? Yep. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. She's trying not to kick. She's tensing up or whatever she needs to do. And I'm going to try it again. Okay, it still happened. Okay, you can still see that reflex even though she's trying not to do it once I stimulate it something is gonna happen and she's gonna do that reflex now we're gonna look at the eye blink reflex and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hand and I'm gonna do it towards the eyes and you see that she blinked I'm gonna do it again and you see that she blink okay this is what I need you to do, honey. I need you to think about not blinking and try hard not to blink. Can you do that? I can try. <laughs> okay, sweet. She's going to try. All right. Don't blink. Try really hard. Okay, she didn't blink. I'm going to try it again. And she didn't blink. So she had more control of this reflex than she did with the knee jerk reflex. So now we're going to talk about how this process actually works. So let's look at the mechanism behind the knee jerk reflex. Here we have uh, someone's leg and here's the knee and right here we have the patellar tendon. So let's say I took a tendon hammer and I applied pressure to this tendon by just striking it there. What that's going to do is it's going to stimulate sensory neurons. And we spoke about the different types of neurons in episode 2. We spoke about sensory neurons that send signals to the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord. And we spoke about motor neurons that send signals away from the central nervous system and to muscles and organs and glands. And then we spoke about interneurons that are fully contained within the central nervous system. Right here, what happens is, when you strike the patellar tendon, that sends a signal via this sensory neuron, let me show that in a different color, via this sensory neuron to the spinal cord. So this is looking at the spinal column, this is looking at the spinal cord as a cross section. And what you'll see is that makes a synaptic connection to a motor neuron, and that's this other neuron that's coming here and that neuron goes and stimulates the muscles to contract causing the leg to be extended. Now the key thing here is when we look at this connection that's happening inside the spinal cord so if we look right here we'll see that it's just a sensory neuron connected to a motor neuron and there are no interneurons whatsoever in this process. So I'm going to write here, no interneuron. So because we don't have any interneurons in this, what we call a simple reflex arc, let me write that here, simple reflex arc, there's hardly any processing happening here. Once a signal comes in, a signal will go out, the muscles will contract, and the knee-jerk reflex will happen, 
the leg will extend. The key here is that there is no interneuron and because there is no interneuron, there won't be any significant processing happening and once a signal comes in, a signal will go out. Now let's look at the eye blink reflex. The eye blink reflex is a little different and I'm going to attempt to draw an eye here, looking at it from the side. I'm just going to simplify it and this is my eye and here we have the pupil. This is a green-eyed person. <laughs> Alright, so when I took my hand and I, I swung my hand towards my wife's eye, she blinked. And what you have here is we have sensory neurons once again coming into the central nervous system and I'm gonna show this very simply. And then we have one interneuron. So I'm going to draw that interneuron here. And then we have one motor neuron. So this is my soma. And then we have the motor neuron sending signals to the muscles surrounding the eye. And when this happens, it stimulates the muscles to contract and you blink your eye. However, because there is one interneuron here, one interneuron, there is more control that you can have because you can block the signal that goes to the motor neuron. So by putting that one interneuron here, we're giving some more control. And you can control that eye blink reflex it's a little harder to control than other movements, but you can still control it. Now, if you were to look at other movements that you make, like moving your hands and moving your legs and so on, there are many, many, many interneurons that are involved in that process. And the more interneurons you have, the more control you can have. If you look at something as complex as speech, where you have muscles in the mouth and you have the vocal cords that you're causing to vibrate, and there's a lot of detail that's happening when you want to speak. In order for that to be the case, there needs to be many interneurons. And the more interneurons you have in the process, the more control you're going to have over the muscle contractions and over the movements. So that's how reflexes work. That is why the knee jerk reflex happens whether you want it to happen or not and that is why the eye blink reflex happens but you do have some control over it. These are tests that doctors use to see if the nervous system is functioning correctly and it gives them specific details about specific aspects of the nervous system functioning. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, as usual, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer your question and maybe even make a follow-up video to answer your specific question. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video.